part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Hello, Books with Brooks here. This is Brooks. I'm your host. Uh, this is a book podcast where we read one book a month and then we come on the podcast and we talk about it. Our book for the month of January 2022 is called Laziness Does Not Exist by Devin Price. Laziness Does Not Exist by Devin Price. We'll be back at the end of the month to discuss that book. It is a nonfiction book about probably like hustle culture and like the myth of laziness. So I'm really excited. I think it'll be a great book to start off our year. Really strong. 2022. Toot toot. This is our year, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's uh famous last words right okay the uh this episode i am so thrilled um this is one of my favorite episodes that we do every year and it's sort of a look back on the past year of reading and i ask a bunch of book club members to come on and tell me what their favorite book of 2021 was out of all the books they read some people only read 12 books they read the book club books some people read 50 books and everywhere in between so uh, the parameters that I ask people for are the book does not have to have been published in 2021. You just have to have read it in 2021, which makes things a little bit easier because I know with book clubs, sometimes we um, kind of avoid the like big release books, the brand new books, because they can be hard to get your hands on. They're expensive when you buy them in hardcover. Um, so we read books that are written at any time. Um, sometimes we read classics and we go way back to like early Stephen King's or we recently read Agatha Christie. So the book does not have to be written or published in 2021. You just have to have read it in 2021. It has taken me a really long time to decide what my favorite book is. It was a tough competition this year. There were at least four books vying for my top slot. Um, but I'm really excited that my mom is here. Hi, mom. Hi, Brooks. Hi. I'm so glad you're here. My mom is here and she's going to tell us about her favorite book of 2021. Uh, and I'm going to tell you about my favorite book of 2021. And that's how we'll kick off this episode. And then after us, you'll hear uh, from a bunch of other book club members, all who have different tastes in books, who have different reading styles. Um, and hopefully you'll hear a recommendation that really speaks to you. And you can put it on your to be read list for the new year. Of 2022, which is a word I'm really struggling with saying. <laughs> 2022 <laughs> does not roll off the tongue. Uh, so 2022, there we are. Okay, mom, how, how you just asked me how many books I read this year, which the answer is 55. How many did you read? Do you know? Uh, 38, I think. Wow, impressive, impressive. That's a lot for me. And I gotta say, it was a great year of reading. And you made me pick one. It was very hard. <laughs> yeah. And I went back and forth between three. Yeah. And if you, if you don't ask me pretty soon, I'm probably going to change my mind again. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay. You can change your mind if you want to. Also, you're welcome to tell us what your other two are. I agree. I thought it was really hard. It's hard to pick your very favorite book because there's so many wonderful books. Also, I think, and this is like with all art, your experience of a book also has so much to do with your frame of mind and your like what's going on in your life when you read it. And for me, I can read an amazing book, but like not be in a great headspace. And then that makes that book not be my number one or something. Um, so it's obviously like much more subjective and much more complicated than simply like this book is a good book, if you will. Yeah. And sometimes even the book that you just finished, if it was maybe one that you did not like, it makes the next one a lot better. <laughs> so Very true. If you're on a string of books you don't like that much, and then you finally yeah. get one, and you're like, whoa, this book is amazing. Oh, yeah, yeah, that totally happens. Also, I think it's really... Um, like just the most recent books that you've read <laughs> tend to rise to the top, I think, for me. Um, and that seems to be true, too, of the people I've already spoken with about their favorite books. A lot of them are like they read them right at the end of the year, uh, which is kind of funny. And that actually kind of happened to me, too. One of the books I was considering picking, I just finished like the week of Christmas. So really recently read it, which is all to say I am thrilled to share 
that the book that gets my top spot for the year of 2021 is called Falling by T.J. Newman. Mom. Wow, not even heard of it. Okay, so that's actually a part of why I picked this, because I haven't seen it on very many lists. It, I haven't seen it getting a lot of love, um, in my opinion. This book was published in 2021, which I actually didn't realize until I went to look it up before recording this. Um because I listened to it on Audible, on audiobook. I, I think I picked it kind of randomly, honestly. Um, I'm not sure where the idea for it came from for me. But anyways, I got it on Audible. The book itself is like eight and a half hours long. The audiobook. I, I listened to it in less than 24 hours. It was... And that's honestly like maybe one of the first times that's happened to me. Like I've had really great audiobooks in the past. One that comes to mind is um, Daisy Jones and the Sixth or The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, both incredible audiobooks that I absolutely adored. But even with the, like, I literally could not stop listening to this book. I couldn't put it down. I couldn't push pause. I couldn't take my earbuds out. Like I just, I like started it on like a Friday evening. I listened to it until like midnight until I just had to go to sleep. Then I woke up the first thing the next morning and like put it on again and finished it that day. Like I couldn't, it was incredible. Anyways, which is all to say, the book Falling by T.J. Newman, which I also just learned that T.J. Newman is actually a woman and she was is a former flight attendant, which is really relevant because this book, the premise of this book is that um, a pilot boards a flight from like LAX to JFK. So it's like a long six hour flight. As soon as they take off, he receives a text message. It's a photo of his family, his wife and children um, being held hostage. And they tell him, you have to crash the plane in order to save your family. And then the book, you know, to unfold mm -hmm. over these six hours that he's in the air. It is so suspenseful. I thought the writing was fantastic. It was so realistic for me as like a heavy traveler, like just so much about like what was taking place on the airplane felt realistic. Um, so obviously it's like, a, like a big and suspenseful, but it also felt like very grounded. And, and anyways, highly recommend Falling by TJ Newman. And I think if I asked myself, Brooks, why do you recommend this book to other people? It would be because, again, I haven't seen it on that many lists, so I don't think a lot of people know about it. Um, and I think it's going to be made into a, well, I hope it gets made into a movie because I think mean, it'll be a like insanely good movie starring like Denzel Washington or something. Um, <laughs> and it was just an incredible <laughs> listening experience and I have recommended it to a few other people who have also enjoyed it. So I feel confident that it's a crowd pleaser. Hopefully. It sounds like a great movie plot. Uh, yeah. An excellent movie plot. I don't, haven't. I have not read that it's been optioned, but I really hope that it is. It's fantastic. And very cool to me that the, oh, also this is her debut novel, which is insane. So wow. kind of a real, like, we are the Brennan situation. Um, Tracy Lang, shout out. Uh, so she's like a flight attendant, waitress turned author who wrote this book and has seen a lot of success. Extremely cool. Very inspiring. Falling by TJ Newman. Put it on your list. Yeah, I just did. Oh, good. You sold me on. I would lend it to you, but I only have it on audiobook. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so that's mine. Thank you for listening. Do you have any questions? Any questions? Are you? Do you know when that book was published? Yeah, it says July 2021. Just this year? Okay. Or last year, I guess now. <laughs> yeah, so it's new. And I listened to it. When did I listen to it? Uh, I listened to it this summer. Yeah, July 31st. So maybe I found it in like the like new release section of Audible or something. Because I, apparently I listened to it right after it came out, which I didn't even realize until right now. Hmm. Um, okay, mom, have you changed your mind again? Do you know what your top book is? I'm going to stick with my <laughs> last <laughs> choice, but... Okay, I, okay. You know, I'm just going to preface that by saying... So my favorite author, Frederick Bachman, or Bachman. Oh, mine too. Is, I'm not sure if it's Bachman or Bachman. It, yeah. Um, probably doesn't matter because we're not Swedish. <laughs> uh, you know, he 
just wrote another fantastic book with anxious people. However, I am going to go with The Rose Code by Kate Quinn. <gasps> the Rose Code. Oh, I can picture it. I haven't read it, but I can picture the cover. Oh, you've not read it? I haven't read it. Okay. Well, it is a phenomenal book. It takes place during the war, and it's about three amazing female characters who become um, code breakers during the war. And each character is so different and so well-developed, which is, to me, what makes a good book, is how well-developed the characters are, which is one of the reasons I love Frederick Buckman, because his characters are so well-developed. Uh, but this book just, it, it has it all, um, you know, historical fiction, three strong female characters, just um, a lot of suspense and a lot of good twists, especially at the end. So Ooh. read this book. It's great. It sounds amazing. I also want to point out that it's by the same author who wrote The Alice Network. Also a very good Which book. Which was an amazing book that we read, I think, in 2019 um, for book club. And people really, really liked it. I think someone picked it as their favorite book in 20... Maybe that was 2020. Anyways, not sure. I love the Alice Network. That was a great book. It was a great book. And this book sounds really similar to the Alice Network. But it's... How different is it, would you say? You know, it's been a while since I've read... Yeah, the Alice the, Network. The Alice Network. But I did love that book. And when you say that, I'm just wondering if it was me that picked that for my favorite book that year. Um, it might have been. It might It might have been because I did love that book. Uh, and and while, while it's, you know, takes place during the year, the, the war, um, also, it, it's different in the fact that if I remember right, the Alice Network was more about spies. And these women are not spies. They're code breakers. Oh, got it. Got it. Okay. So they work in this um, hidden slum of a building, really, that is a secret place where only these code breakers know about and they're housed there. And, yeah. you know, so... so same but different um but another a fantastic book by by Kate Quinn yeah amazing that's a really good pick and I did just look back so we read the Alice Network in November 2019 so almost two years ago or I guess more than two years ago so well that's a great recommendation and actually this would make an excellent book club book so perhaps Perhaps we'll pick it in the new year. It looks like this one also came out just last year in March of 2021. Right. So this was also a 2021 public it was, publication. It was a 2021 publication, which is not the reason I picked it. Yes. Well, that's not one of the rules. It's because it's, because it's just a great book. Yeah. Amazing. Wait, so you have to tell me what was your third book you were thinking of picking? It's a book that you gave me for Christmas. Ooh, heck yeah. I'm such a good gift giver. Toot toot. Uh, you are. But so you gave it, it would have been Christmas 2020. You gave yes. it to me. And I read it in 2021 by Beatrice Williams called A Certain Age. Oh, yeah. That book is great. I read that. It, yeah, it's great. I, I mean, it. she... Her prose is just beautiful. It's almost yeah. like reading poetry. Mm -hmm. It's just so flowery and descriptive, and it's just simply beautiful. So really, you know, a different reason for loving a book than the characters, although she does well in that too, but it's the way, it's just the way she says everything, and she makes you be able to visualize it to a T. And um, so that was my third one. Amazing. You know what? I have not read this book. I was thinking of a different Beatrice Williams because um, I've read several of her other ones and they have all been great. Well, I had never read her before until you presented me with that 
you know, with that book. And I was thrilled to find another author that I like. Yeah, actually, yeah, she would be a really good pick for book club too, if you guys haven't read. It's Beatriz with a Z, B E A T R I Z Williams. She would be a great author um, to read for book club because she's, I think she has like a pretty wide like volume of work and people might be into her style, which is very beautiful. Like you said, very poetic, very literary, lovely. Yeah. So here's to another great year of reading. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm already kicking the year off on a really good foot. So thrilled. All right. Well, thanks, Mom. I really appreciate you listening to my recommendation, and I appreciate you making one as well. Well, thanks for sharing, and I'm I'm going to put it on my list of reads for 2022. Please do. All right. Okay. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Looking forward to 2022. Hello. Now I'm here with my friend Maggie. Hi, Maggie. Hello. Oh, happy 2022. Happy 2022. <sighs> Thank you. I'm so excited to hear about your reading experience in 2021 and especially what your number one book, your favorite book was from the entire year. Will you tell me? Sure. Uh, overall, it was a great reading experience. Um, yeah, I, I had a lot of fun with all the books we read with Books with Brooks and the books that oh. I read on my own. Yeah. Um, the book that I picked for my favorite book of 2021 is a book called Ask Again Yes, and it's <gasps> by an author called Mary Beth Keen. Yes, Ask Again Yes, Mary Beth Keen. Lovely. What a beautiful pick. Yes, uh, I read it. I had to refresh. I, I remember that I rated it five stars, and I thought about it for – you know, those books that you think about the plot line for like a couple weeks or months after reading it. I read mm-hmm. it early in 2021. So I had to refresh myself with what, what it was about. Um, but I remember how much I liked it. And um, it was a little bit of a longer book and it wasn't like super action packed, but I really liked that the characters were well developed. So um, there's no like, there's no big huge plot line or murder mystery or it's not action-packed like that but um I really enjoyed the characters in the book yeah well you tell I have not read this book I have it on my nightstand um because this was a huge book this book came out in 2019 yes um and actually I have read her book fever um which is about like um Oh, now I can't remember. It's like about I was a just going to say, I haven't read uh, anything else that she's written. So <sighs> yes. I need to. Um, but I haven't read this and I really, really want to. But I feel like, like you said, it's a little bit long. So when I look at it on my shelf, I'm like, that's a big boy. I'll save for you sure. for another time. And I just haven't like picked it up, even though I, I really think I will like it. Tell, can you tell us a little bit about what it's about? Yes. Yeah, so it's about um, two families that live in like the suburbs in New York um, and just how the families like relate to one another. And um, one, like when the parents, like it starts with the parents, but then they have kids. And when the kids are in eighth grade, they end up dating and then they end up getting married. That's not a spoiler. Um, but then it, it talks about how the families relate to one another and there's a big family tragedy. Um, but it goes, it's one of those books that like, it follows the two families along, like, I don't know, 50 plus years. So you start when, um, when the parents are moving. Yes. Um, Mm -hmm. so I loved that. And they both have, um, big families. And I think, I don't know if I like it cause I come from a big family too, but I love that. Um, like the, the characters are easy to develop just like based on their place in the family and what's happened to them and how they relate with one another, um, in both families. So I, I just really liked reading about, um, the different families and how certain plot lines can include, like multi-generational people right so like um there's there can be some drama that includes like the mom and the grandpa and the kids and you Mm -hmm. can kind of all see their personalities and how they shine oh amazing that sounds so good i really really want to read it okay i will get it read this year definitely 2022 um also i looked up fever and i remember now so fever is a book about typhoid mary Oh. Um, it's like a historical novel about um, the woman known as Typhoid Mary, who was like the first, I don't remember if she was like the first person to test positive for typhoid, but she was like a super spreader. Basically, Ooh. she carried the 
carried the illness and like gave it to everyone she ever like worked with or worked for. But that was so early. People didn't really understand. Wow. This is a big, okay. We don't need to get into this, but it was great. <laughs> and I, and I know from that book that Mary Beth Keene is an excellent writer. So. Yes. I'll have to read it. Yeah. You can check out Fever. It's um, yeah. It's like a little more dry because it, it reads like a little bit more historical than I think Asking and Yes is like a true novel. Yep. A novel. Um, yeah, but I definitely learned a lot and like it was interesting and like tons of character development, as you um, mentioned. So yeah. that's an amazing pick, Maggie. Okay, but I know you were really, really torn between this book and another book. Yes. Um, and I made you pick one. So tell me Thank about the you. other book. Yes. Uh, I had a hard time picking. So um, my husband and I were down with COVID the last two Ugh, weeks of 2021. Sorry. Um, so. Um, once I started feeling better, we, I like read four books in a week, which is great. But one of them that I got to was We Are the Brennans, which was a books with Brooke pit, (gasps) books with Brooke's pick, um, in the fall. And I, I don't remember why I couldn't get it from the library or I was busy. So I hadn't read it and it was on my stack to read. Um, and I found myself falling in love with that book. Um, and I think for a lot of the same reasons that I liked Ask Again, Yes, um, it was about, you know, a big family and um, just how everyone relates to one another. And I think a lot of times, um, at least in, in the real world, people think that everything is kind of perfect in big families. So um, they're definitely not. And I come from a big family, so I know that it's not always perfect. And in both books show, um, you know, how, what, what people might perceive what's going on in a family and then what's really going on in a family. So I loved uh, that part about we are the Brennans and um, how close the family is despite everything that happens. Yeah. That's amazing. I also loved we are the Brennans. I'm really glad that you brought it up and we get to talk about it a little bit, but I um, I'm totally with you that like family drama as a genre is right up my alley. I'm super into it. I want to join all these messy families. Like I really want to sit around the kitchen table with the Brennans and like, ah, yeah, I love, yeah, these books are so good. And I feel like sometimes people don't like them because, and you mentioned this with Ask Again, yes, but like, there isn't necessarily a ton of like action. Yeah. There, like, and so some people get bored, which I totally understand, but like, I don't, I'm like, yeah, tell me more about what happened in eighth grade. Yeah, like, exactly. Brother number three. <laughs> Yeah, I loved him. We are the Brennans. There actually was a little bit of a little bit of drama at the end. Um, yeah, a little bit true. of who done it. But who I it? like that wasn't even my favorite part of the book. Even though I also love like um, I love mystery books too. Mm-hmm. Um, but I found myself. I mean, that was a great part of the book. But that wasn't even like my favorite part of the book. I just um, I loved how all the characters got to know one another and. Um, as you learned about them, like in present day, you kind of got to hear stories about what made them the way they are, which is the same thing in a lot of novels. You get like backstories about how, um, how you know, certain events help to shape the characters, but it's kind of fun, um, like learning about all the characters at once and they all interact with one another because so, a lot of novels, they all come from different worlds, but like almost everything that any character does affects all the other ones too, which is really Mm -hmm. interesting it's like ripple effect exactly yeah well and the idea of just like you never know what's going on behind closed doors you know like you just it's this really cool inside look at like how people live i feel like it's similar to like i love to walk around and look inside people's houses not in a creepy way but like you know walk around like lincoln park or old town people have their curtains open you just get to look inside like it's amazing i love to see how people live for sure so i think it's like yeah it's like a lot of that too yeah they're definitely more um like for better for worse family dramas are most of the time a lot more realistic than like a fantasy book or a even Mm. like a mystery book that i read uh like you know, page turner, even though there might not be like any fantasy or um, like fairies in those books. A lot of times it's not a situation where I'd find myself in like, you know, trying to solve a murder. But a lot of the situations in like the family books are definitely like very, very realistic, which Mm -hmm. I think I like about them. And like relatable. For sure. Yeah. 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 Oh, Maggie, such good picks. I'm definitely 
definitely going to read Ask Again Yes this year. Thank you for inspiring me to do that. Yes. Well, thank you. And um, it puts the pressure on for some good reads in 2022. It sure does. I'm feeling like it's going to be a good year. Although I did just read a book that I really hated, but that's okay. (laughs) It's fine. That happens. It happens. All right. Well, Maggie, happy reading. Happy reading. Here I am with my friend Ruth in New York City. Hi, Ruth. Hey, Brooks. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Really good. Really good. good. Did you have, do you consider 2021 to be a good reading year for you? It really was. Uh, I think I read more books last year than probably in the last like three or four combined, honestly. Whoa, dang, that is a good reading year. To what do you attribute that? Well, it is because of my job, because I had to read all those books to be able to direct the audiobook versions. Mm, I was just plowing through multiple books a week, which was great. And actually, the funny thing about that is then making time to read books that were not for work. So that was really the key, was hollowing out vacation books for myself. (laughs) Yeah, there you go. What a double-edged sword. Mm. I always thought like, oh, to get paid to read, would there be anything better? But then, yeah, like you said, then you you have much less control over what you're consuming. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yes, listeners, you'll remember Ruth's voice from a previous episode in which we discussed her very, very cool job as an audiobook director for Penguin Random House. So Ruth... Your opinion is very, very um, cherished, <laughs> admired, honored, um, appreciated as a as a as a person in the industry, unlike most of us. Wow! Thank so you I'm re- so so much. For that. <laughs> I'm really excited to hear. Out of all the books you read last year, what was your favorite? Okay, so I actually mentioned this one briefly the last time we spoke, but I'm glad we have ch- a chance to like talk about it more in depth. My number one pick from the last year is a book called Something New Under the Sun by Alexandra Mm -hmm. Kleeman. Um, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've recommended this book to pretty much everyone, and I think it has a little bit of everything in it. But to give a little synopsis for you. Yes, please synopsis. I have not read this book. I am aware of it from you and also from just like... It's got a lot of buzz online. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I've been really happy seeing it in the like end of year lists as a recommendation. Um, it is both a book about Hollywood and movie making and sort of the culture around, uh, I don't know, like stardom and how we represent celebrity. And then over all of that, it is a book about climate change and drought, mm-hmm. specifically in California, but also generally, um, mm-hmm. without giving any spoilers as to how strange this book gets, because it does get very, very strange. Um there is a character who is not in Hollywood who we hear from a couple of times who becomes this sort of voice almost of reason about um, the depths of despair that she is feeling about the climate changing and the death and um, sort of wave of desolation that humans have wrought upon the planet. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know, I found her character really moving and she's just a teeny part of this book but I'd really, really recommend it. And Alexandra... Oh, go ahead, Brooks. No, no, please. Um, Continue. Alexandra Kleeman, I'm reading her an earlier book of hers right now called You Two Can Have a Body Like Mine. And something that is in common between the two books is that she has a real knack for describing the sort of like human goriness of eating and drinking. The sort of like... (laughs) animal (laughs) disgust associated with the way we consume things and Mm -hmm. uh i think like as a grander metaphor for how we consume things generally highly highly recommend something new under the sun by alexandra kleeman ruth i am proud to have clicked it to put on my want to read list on goodreads oh that's a high honor Um, i love the the i don't know I'm actually like pretty liberal with that button, but uh, it helps me keep things organized. (laughs) 
Um, but I wanted to say that it's really amazing that you picked this book because um, we talked in book club this fall about this kind of emerging genre. Perhaps it has already emerged, but of climate change fiction. Yes. Um, which our book Greenwood yes. fit into that category. Um, and I do think it's 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 very popular, super trendy, really interesting. Um, it I feel like especially due to the pandemic, it's like feels even more relevant or something. Yes. Even though obviously like the pandemic isn't really about climate, but it's sort of like this dystopian future we're all experiencing together mm-hmm. um, makes these books like hit home even more. Um, yes, I completely agree. And in fact, for listeners out there, when Brooks asked me if I'd be willing to talk about my number one book of this year, I wanted to suggest two companion books to go with it that are both <laughs> Please. that are both I told you there are no rules so go wild okay I must suggest these are also um climate apocalypse or sort of like um human apocalypse novels and I do think this genre really is even if it's not I mean I think there's more of it being written now but also I think it's resonating more deeply I think you're totally right like the pandemic has brought this into focus for people so these mm-hmm. two other ones that I really want to recommend are Leave the World Behind by Rumin Alam and that's just typing these if you can hear me typing okay got it <laughs> <laughs> and the other one is called The New Wilderness by Diane Cook And I think if you're looking for a trifecta of books that are sort of about humans grappling with change happening in their time, like the moment at which we're sort of at this switch from a lived normal experience to then knowing a new world, these three books do that incredibly well. Mm, I haven't heard of those, I don't think. Oh my God. Highly recommend. The Yeah, I'd really... If anybody reads or listens to them, I'd love to discuss. Amazing. Ooh, I really like the cover of Leave the World it's Behind. Beautiful. It's beautiful. Creepy, like, swimming pool diving board. Yeah. I like that. that That's awesome. That, and these are all very different, too, in their settings. Like, Leave the World Behind is the Hamptons. Something New Under the Sun is L.A. And the New Wilderness is sort of an unnamed part of... The United States in a dystopian future that's like the last vestige of wild that's left. Mm, yeah, that kind of reminds me of Greenwood. Yes. Just about the like final forest. Um, Ruth, did you read these books? Were these vacation books or were these work books the, for you? So um, the other two that I just mentioned were vacation books in that I nice. read them for fun. And you just picked them up. Yeah, I love I love Diane Cook. She's incredible. I've read her short stories before, and I was eagerly anticipating mm. her first novel. Okay. I think this is her first cool. one. The other thing that I'll point out about something new under the sun is that it actually was published in 2021. Yes, it so was. I don't, when we talk about these books that are our favorite books, it doesn't have to be a book that was published in 21, but it has to be a book you read in 21. Mm-hmm. Um, and this one is published in 2021, which is kind of cool. So it's like a new read. Indeed, it is. Indeed, it is. Yeah which is fun to point out. So Ruth, uh, always a pleasure. Truly. You have such a sparkling voice and a fun outlook on the world. And I love to hear your opinion. I love how you were like, Ruth, you have a fun outlook on the world. The three books I picked are all dystopian, <laughs> dystopian it's novels about, about human despair and, and death. <laughs> about oh, it. man. Thank you so Valid much. Valid criticism of my compliment. You know what? I'll thank take you. it, though. I'll take it anyway. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, Ruth, I hope 2022. That is, I, know. I, I don't know if anyone else I'm is struggling, really struggling with, it. with 20, the pronunciation of this current year. Um, but I hope it's a really <laughs> good reading year for you. Thank you so much. Again. I hope so too. Thank you. All right. We'll have you back on soon. Bye, Ruth. Bye, Brooks. I am here with my friend Aaliyah calling in from her closet in Colorado. Hi, Aaliyah. Hello, Brooks. Hi! Should I not have told people that you're sitting in your closet? No, I'm okay with it. It just has the best sound because I'm surrounded by clothes it, and carpet. Yeah, it sounds amazing. And just so everyone knows, I'm in my laundry room. So that's the podcast life, you know? <laughs> you got to find the smallest room to sit in. And it's so glamorous, <laughs> truly. Everyone should do it. <laughs> Absolutely. Anyways, Aaliyah, I have brought you here today because I'm so excited to hear about your favorite book of 2021. Will you tell me what it was? 
Yes. And this is going to be a surprise for you because you didn't even ask me in advance. But my I, favorite I book... love to be surprised. <laughs> my favorite book from 2021 was written in 2018. It is The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. Ooh, that book is excellent. Yes, you gave me many, many excellent book recommendations this year, but this one was by far, by far my favorite. And what will you tell us, for those of us who don't know, tell us what this book is about. Absolutely. So The Great Alone is, it's a story about a family who moves to Alaska, which I didn't know was such an incredible place, but holy cow, it sounds, sounds amazing. I have to go. They moved there yeah. in 1970s and they basically have to survive off the grid. And um, the book's really centered around a 13 year old girl. Her name is Lenny and she's coming of age in a really tumultuous time. Her father, Ernst Albright, is a former Vietnam prisoner of war and he really struggles with very severe PSD. And then her mother, Cora, will just follows this guy anywhere. Um, so when he loses yeah. his job, he decides to move his whole family to Alaska pretty impulsively to seek um, seek a better life for them. And it seems like it's going to be the answer to their prayers. But then, you know, as, as it gets darker and the winter approaches, because the days are really long or really short in Alaska, um, he kind of turns and his, his sort of mental fragile state deteriorates. So it's the story yeah. of this family and surviving uh, struggle and surviving Alaska. Yeah, that's an excellent pick. And I will also say that Kristen Hanna had a book this year. Her new book called The Four Winds was actually the book of the month, best book of the year this year. Um, so if you haven't read that one, I recommend it. Although I don't, I don't think it's as good as The Great Alone, but I don't, I don't think that's a popular opinion. People are obsessed with The Four Winds. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think what Kristen Hanna has going is this, uh, sh you know, struggle against nature. And the Four Winds was very yeah. much the same. It was the Dust Bowl, and the Great Alone is Alaska and the winter. So sh her descriptions of of um, nature against human humanity is is really really fascinating. And that's what I love about her writing. The Four Winds was great, yeah. but I love the Great Alone. That's that's a really good like summation of her writing style. And it's also like family drama. Like, yes, it's a lot about relationships, familial relationships, um, a little bit about love. Yeah, she's a beautiful writer. And this book is fantastic. And I think that the, this book in a rare way has like the most perfect title of any book ever. It's called The Great Alone. And for me, just like truly sums up this book of like this one lonely girl trying to survive in the Alaskan wilderness. Like it's so perfect to me, the great alone. I love it. I hadn't even thought about that. Uh, but yes, I agree. 100%. Yeah. It's really good. So are there any other reasons you would recommend this book to others? Well, when I was thinking about what I really loved about it, um, an incredible story. I really like the family drama, as you put it, and the struggle of this, of this young girl, um, f sort of fighting for her life emotionally and physically. Um, and then I also just love the setting, the landscape and the way that Kristen Hanna describes Alaska and sort of the harsh winter. And then the other thing I loved about this book, and I know this is controversial for you, the delivery. Uh, I lis I actually listened to it on audiobook and Julia Whalen oh, is no, incredible. No. That's not Julia Whalen, listen. I, I, I like I'm obsessed speak to with her. her voice. It's so good. Uh, I totally agree. I literally just listened to a New York Times, like, I forget what they call them, but like the New York Times shorts that sometimes they will record. And Julia Whalen does all of them. And her voice is unbelievable. Yes. It's I just, love it so much. I would listen to anything she said. She could just say nonsense and I would listen. <laughs> yes, I agree. And she was my first audiobook listen of this year with The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. Didn't she read that one oh. too? Oh my God. That was my best book of last and, year. And her reading is like, yeah, so lyrical. So beautiful. It's so beautiful. Yeah. That makes me want, I actually. Wait, your best book of 2021? Mm, no, my best. Invisible Life of Addie LaRue was my best book last year, I think. Yeah. 2020. Well, last year was 2021, Brooks. Get with the program. Oh, oops. You're right. It's 2022, <laughs> everybody. I can't remember that. I can't remember when I write it down. I can't remember it when I write emails. I can't remember when I create documents. That's where we are. So 
you're right. 2020 was now two years ago. What the heck? I'm still processing. <laughs> <sighs> well, Aaliyah, thank you. thank you so much. That was an excellent yeah. choice. Um, I'm so happy to hear about it. I love that you're reading um, avidly. It makes me so happy. And and the audiobook thing is no longer controversial for me. I am a okay. huge audiobook advocate these days. So I love it. Keep keep on keeping on. Thanks, Brooks. Thanks for having me on. And stick around after the break to hear about some more amazing books from 2021. Hello, this is Don Mike Mendoza, the host of the Producing While Asian podcast. Join us to listen in on conversations with everyone who identify from producers to non-producers who all are part of the AAPI community. There's all that and more on the Producing While Asian podcast here on the Press Play Podcast Network. I am here with my friend, Carrie. Hi, Carrie. Hi. Hi. I'm so excited to hear about your favorite book of 2021. And I actually, I don't think I know what you're going to say. I don't think you've told me prior to this conversation. So it'll be a surprise for all of us. Um, will you tell me what was your favorite book of last year? Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to say it surprised me as well, because it was the last book that I read in 2021. And it's the book by Stephen King. Um, I guess the title is 112263. Um, but it's, I guess, it, most importantly, to signify the date of November 22nd, 1963. Yes, by Stephen King. Okay, I have this book on my nightstand. I have been meaning to read it for like two years, but it is a monster. How long is this book? Do you know? Oh, I got it from the library and I was shocked at the size of it, it's 849 pages. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, that's a big boy. That's a big boy. Yeah. That's why I haven't picked it up. I'm ashamed to say that that's why I haven't picked it up. All right, so tell us. I am vaguely aware of what it's about, but tell us really quickly what what is this book about? 112263 by Stephen King. Um, yes. Yeah, so the importance of this date um, from a historical perspective from a historical perspective is that it's there. the date that um president J jfk was assassinated mm, right. um so the book is really centered around this grand event um but it's about this english teacher who basically falls into being able to time travel and the synopsis is that he thinks that he may try to go back to the date of 11 and stop the assassination of JFK mm -hmm. and be able to like alter the change, the changes from that event. And, you know, it spirals into you know, the Vietnam war and perhaps all these other parts of um, history. And so he, it's, it's a very quick read, but it's, um, it's super fascinating, but it's loosely based on time travel. Love it. I love it. And so it's not, it's interesting to me, this book, because when we think of Stephen King, we think of like The Shining, we think of like horror. And that's right. not, this book is not a horror book, right? Right. It's, I was surprised. I was under that impression as well. And um, there are a couple of parts that are intense and there's a little bit of violence, but really not typical of Stephen King. Like yeah. pretty mild. Yeah, that's really interesting. I, I really, really want to read it. I'm so glad you picked this book because I seriously <laughs> stare at it <laughs> on my to be read shelf every day. Like that book is huge. I even think I've picked it up a time or two and then like, is today the day? And then I'm like, no, <laughs> it's not. The um, only how reason why I knew about it was um, because Beth, another fellow Books with Brooks member, yes. Recommended it as her favorite Stephen King book, and she's like, "You should read it." And so yeah. I got it, and mm -hmm. very pleasantly surprised. I even saw the cover, and there's a picture of JFK in the car with um, Jackie Kennedy next to him, and I thought, "Oh, like, okay, is this gonna be like? I don't know. I thought it would be so historically centric um, that it wouldn't be exciting, but I was very, very wrong." Interesting. So, what, like, what are the main reasons it's your favorite book of the year? Um, I think first off, it's very well written in my opinion. Um, the characters are well developed. There is um like a clear and concise like flow of the book. There isn't any part where you're like, why is this here? This makes no sense. It's not serving any purpose to the storyline. 
Um, and I think personally, I just have always been fascinated with time travel. Yeah. So that was just really cool to read about. Yeah. And I think it was also just really exciting. Um, there are a lot of different parts that, like I said, are very intense. Um, there aren't any lulls in the book. It's pretty just, um, what's the best word? Yeah, it's pretty like exciting the whole way through. Yeah. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, because you would think in a book that long that you're going to have long stretches of like, oh, not a lot's happening. <laughs> yeah. So how long did it take you to read? Do you know? Oh, so I started, um, I brought it with me on my trip over Christmas and New Year's. It, I think I've read it in like six days. What? Okay. Yeah. Wow. Whole oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I was insanely I just, fast. I, I couldn't put it down. Okay. Um, yeah. I just, awesome. I couldn't put it down. I wanted uh, to know so much what happened. Okay. This is such a good recommendation, Carrie. I really, really want to read it. And you, yeah, Beth has recommended it. Derek, who's in book club, has recommended it. I, it it's a lot of people say this is like a truly remarkable read. It's yeah. just intimidating because of its length. So what a great pick. Um, is there any like any other specific reasons you want to recommend this to other people to read that we haven't already talked about? No, I think it's just it's it's very exciting and it's it's fun. And it's it's just I think it's just a very overall like really good book. It is also like the title of it is so unique. Like it's just a date, 11 63 Yeah. Oh, really good. Carrie, thank you so much for sharing that. I really, it's going to inspire You're me welcome. to read this book. 2021 is the year. Definitely. I might save it for like, similarly, if I have a vacation or something. <laughs> um, yeah. I'll like save it for maybe a special occasion, but I am definitely going to read it this year. Thank you so much. That's your 2022 resolution. That's, right. That's it. <laughs> Made on January 9th. I don't know what today is actually, but it's pretty late. In the yeah, it's the 9th. For a resolution. That's okay. <laughs> you can make resolutions whenever you want, really. Yeah. All right. Well, on that note, happy new year. Thank you. You too. Thanks, Carrie. Thank you. Bye. Bye. I have my friend Beth here to talk about her favorite book of 2021. Hi, Beth. Hi, Brooks. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for being here. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> I'm really excited to hear about your favorite book of 2021. And it doesn't have to be a Books with Brooks book. So don't worry, it won't hurt my feelings if it is not. So tell us what it is and who wrote it. Okay, well, it is a Books with Brooks. Yes! God. I was secretly hoping it was. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, I will admit, I don't have a lot of time to do much reading outside of Books with Brooks, so it was probably going to be a Books with Brooks book. Um, sweet, sweet, sweet. Say that a hundred times fast. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, but I will say this book was fabulous. And there was just a plethora of riches this year, I feel. We did a really good job. But Yeah, we had some book, good books. Agreed. I agree with that. Yes, yes. Um, but honestly, this book takes the cake for me. It's Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson. Oh, amazing. Yes. Um, this little weird book that we read over the summer <laughs> yeah. just really, really captured my imagination and stole my heart. So Aww. I am just like thrilled to have read this book. This is never something that I think I would have picked up because it's sort of bizarre and and if you read a synopsis you might be like no I don't want to read that um yeah. uh, but basically and did you just, did you read it or did you listen to it on audiobook I read it I read okay. it just wondering mm -hmm. yes and this was the book we read this in April I'm just looking at my list oh really oh my gosh yeah we read oh, it in April it made me feel like summer <laughs> yeah no totally I mean I think yeah we were like going into summer and the book is set in the summertime I feel like because mm -hmm, they just like mm -hmm. always taking the kids to the pool Yes. Um, but I totally agree with you that this is a fantastic book that was like not marketed correctly, in my opinion. No, it's no. way different than what it is described as. Yes. So, I mean, just for the listeners really quick, it's basically a book about a person who this girl who's kind of down and out, down on her luck, like living with her mom sort of in this kind of shitty situation and her old friend who's rich from boarding school reaches out to her and asks if she will come help take care of her old friend's 
stepkids that are going to be moving in with her over the summer in I think in the Hamptons, but I don't remember Brooks. Yeah, somewhere um, bougie, somewhere someone like very posh. very bougie. Yes, and she's like, I've never taken care of kids before, and basically it's like this sort of mystical, magical, weird version of like. I don't know, The Sound of Music or something, but... <laughs> or like Mary Poppins a little bit. Yeah, but yeah. what I loved about this book, and I'm not going to give away the spoiler, and honestly, if you read a synopsis online, it will give away the spoiler, but I would say if you can avoid it, just because I think it's really interesting, this yeah. book is really realistic, like very yeah. realistic. It's very except grounded. for yeah. one thing. Mm-hmm. And I thought that that was just the most fascinating concept. I would love yeah. to read more books like this yeah. where one sort of unrealistic or magical thing happens and it's only one thing and it's the same every time. There's not like different magical rules or anything like that. It's just one thing and they deal with it in a realistic way, which mm-hmm. is insane. Like it's a book that it's just – it crosses genres for me in a way that was just so unique yeah. um and I've always thought about that like we live in a realistic world I've always thought like what if something magical happened like what would we do yeah and what would we do probably exactly this like we'd figure it out and we'd probably continue with our day-to-day lives like fairly normally <laughs> yeah and and this is so like it's just so I don't know it really moved me and and by the end of it I was just like very invested and just a really lovely book. It is a lovely book. I'm so glad you picked it. And I actually kind of forgot about it. I need to sit down and go through like my 2021 reading list. I read quite a few books outside of the books with Brooks list. Um, and I kind of forgot about this one, but it, it, it was fantastic. And it was a short read. And it mm-hmm. was like, it really, yeah, excellent pick, Beth excellent pick i also highly recommend this book so i'm so pleased you're more than welcome there was a lot of books that i thought were more obvious like oh this was great and i loved it but this book just like hit me in some weird place and i love that yeah i love that okay well what a fantastic recommendation if you could sum it up in like a sentence why would you tell someone to read this book or two sentences i think (laughs) Sure. I think that this book is magical and realistic in a way that is surprising. And even if you can't relate to anything that's happening in the book, you relate to the very human experience that this character yeah. goes through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I have no like n- no idea what she went through, but like I, by the end of the book, I really felt for her and I felt her change and I felt her just grow yeah. and accept and yeah. all of the things. So, Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson. That's Beth's pick from 2021. Beth, thank you so much. I hope 2022 is an even better reading year for you. And I can't wait to hear what you love at the end of this year. Oh, I love you, Brooks. I Thanks. love you. Thanks for being on the podcast. Bye. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. I am so pleased I have my friend Megan here to tell me about her favorite book of 2021. Hello, Megan. How are you? Hello, Brooks. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. You know, I just heard that when you're on your fourth day of being back from the, the holidays, it's you can't say Happy New Year anymore. It's it's just poor form. What? Like if it's the third day, who made that? Rule? I don't know who's making the rules around here, but it's acceptable three days into being back, but not four. So yeah, but heck? just know that I do wish you a happy new year. Thank you so much. I think that I'm using it as a greeting, generally with people I haven't spoken with right. yet. Like if we've only texted, it doesn't breaker. count. Until I've spoken with you, I'm going to wish you a happy new year, okay? It's the new it's, year. It is. And we're Thank excited you. to be in a new Welcome. one. This is the year of your wedding. So it's we a are. very, very exciting one. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. Hopefully I get some get some wedding planning done. <laughs> <laughs> in between all of this reading, I set my reading goal. I'm feeling great. I'm really looking forward to our January book for Books with Brooks, which is called uh laziness does not exist i think i announced that on the last podcast but we'll plug it here again laziness does not exist looking forward to adjusting my mindset about hustle culture perhaps we'll see 
But really, Megan, I've brought you here today because I am dying to hear what was your favorite book of 2020? It was, drum roll please, Hercule Poirot's Christmas from the one and only Agatha Christie. An icon. Bow down. Truly. What a pick. Excellent choice. And coincidentally, it was our December book. So we all just read it very recently. It's fresh mm-hmm. on our minds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it, uh, it, uh, well, I learned that she's the most widely published author ever. Isn't like, that incredible? I say ever, but that's after the Bible and Shakespeare. So like in sure. terms of, you know, the we could read the Bible, I suppose, for one of our book clubs, but um, <laughs> in terms of consumer friendly reading, yes, she is our girl. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. What a trailblazer. Cause she was born in like was it 1890? Yeah, somewhere around there. And and her books were published, so many of them, like in the 20s and 30s, um, but are still so relevant today, which is super cool. It is very cool. So tell us a little bit about uh, what this book is about. Yeah, so basically, um, so it takes place around Christmas. Um, Apparently, Agatha Christie wanted to have one Christmas book in the lineup of this Hercule Perot, and I could be saying Perot wrong, so pardon me, it's French, but this series of yes, books. I'm sure we're saying it all wrong. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we'll um, just do our best. But I think there were like 20 some books in the series, but she wanted a Christmas one. And so um, for this one, it was the Lee family, and um, the patriarch of the Lee family, Simeon, he was, you know, basically a tyrant. He was a really wealthy old man, but had basically fallen out with most of his children just due to his behavior and just treating them terribly their whole lives. But in this book, he, you know, he's getting pretty old and he decided, I want to have all of my children together at Christmas this year. And, you know, as no spoilers, but uh, as we find out, it really wasn't in the best intentions. Um, he wanted them there for other reasons, but they all came and um, there ends up being a murder in the household. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, a dun, Christmas dun. murder? A Christmas murder. And which coincidentally, side note, I I like heard somewhere that there's the most like murders around Christmas time. Okay, um, I, I posited that, but I, I actually have not looked it up. But I feel like that's true. It's something to that effect. But okay, you wouldn't cool. think it. But I mean, okay, bad. That's not good. But yes, it did happen right in the it. Lee household, unfortunately. And unfortunately. so then um, they bring in Hercule Perot, who is a world-renowned detective, big head, full of himself, but just a <laughs> brilliant genius. And he uncracks... Um, the, who the murderer is. And um, it's just a, a really interesting book in the sense that this was pretty much my first foray into Agatha Christie, but the way that mm-hmm. she keeps you guessing the whole book and, yeah. you know, makes you think like, oh, it, it could be any one of these people of the family or outside of the family who have been into this. And there's person. so many options. There's like eight family members, a bunch of like servants, like several police members. Like there's tons of people it could be. That's a good point. I remember that was some feedback from a couple of people when we recapped the book was there's such a big cast of characters. It was hard to, hard to keep everyone straight a little bit. Yes, that's true. But I think that's part of the genre and like part of the game is just that it could be anyone. It could be any of us. Yeah. Um, and and you can see motive for you know, all of these characters. So, um, you know, it makes you feel like a little bit of a detective yourself when you're reading it. So mm-hmm. that's kind of like mm-hmm. in a nutshell what the book is about. But I won't give anything else away. Mm, Excellent. Yes. No spoilers. We want people to read it. Megan, do you think you will read some more um, Hercule Poirot books? Uh, Are there more of those in your future? You know what? I'm um, I'm embarrassed to say, but since our book club last month, I have read two other books within the series. Um, Have you really? Yeah. So during the uh, holiday travels, I read Peril at End House and then Sad Cypress. And yeah, so it was interesting reading them back to back to see like what sort of formula Christy uses in the books, but also Mm -hmm. how she 
tweaks it a bit in the different ones to still make yeah. sure that the plot lines are super compelling and you know it's mm-hmm. it's still hard to know who done it um she keeps you guessing the whole time in in all of these three books oh cool. and also embarrassing oh, i love i was that. i was sharing my love of agatha christie to joseph uh, my husband listeners and um so he got me <laughs> three more agatha christie books for christmas he did what a good husband was listening. That's amazing. He was paying attention. I am so excited for you. Please report back as you read more of them. I haven't read any more, but I totally would. Um, I just haven't had a chance to get my hands on any. So yes. please t- re- recommend some more. Okay. Once you're to that I point, because I, I would love to dabble more in this icon's brain. It is Agatha Christie. Well, feel free to borrow at any time. Thank you so much. What an excellent pick. I really appreciate you sharing that with all of us. And I'm sure many of our listeners will agree that that was a great book of 2021. It was indeed. And thank you, Brooks, for introducing me to the author and genre. And happy new year to you again. And I'm sure we will talk soon at the next book club. That sounds great. And happy reading. Thank you. You too. And last but certainly not least, I'm here with my friend Chelsea. Hi, Chelsea. Hi. Hi. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. So you are my last interview on the topic of what was your favorite book from 2021? I am dying to know. Will you please tell me? Of course I will. So um, my favorite book of 2021 was The Midnight Library (gasps) by Matt Haig. Wow. The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. And that was a Books with Brooks book club book, was it not? It sure was. I wouldn't have read it otherwise. Oh, man. Wow, wow, wow. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad you picked that one. Okay, for those who don't know, avoiding spoilers, tell us what this book is about. So I really liked this book because it kind of transcends you into a whole other life, right? So it starts, it's about a woman named Nora and she works in a library. She feels like she's very ordinary, kind of doesn't really have much going on with her life. Everything's super mundane. She's bored with herself. Nothing's exciting anymore. So she one night decides to commit suicide and in the process gets bounced into this magical world, um, which is the Midnight Library in which she has multiple different ways that her, it's it's very similar to um, <clears throat> Scrooge, right? All these different ways that their life, her life could have gone. You know, what if she would have stayed with that guy? What if she would have married the other guy, the one that got away? You know, how that would have been for her kind of takes her through the process of that and it's just very humbling in a way because we all go through those phases in our life where we're bored and we have the what ifs and overthink things and feel like we have not achieved what we wanted but in the end it's not always what you think it's gonna be yeah so true yeah it's a little bit of like delving into like the multiverse theory like if we make a choice, that means there's a universe that exists where we made the other choice, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was really imaginative. This was a really fun book. Um, and it was our September book. Am was I looking it? at my wow. little note? I was going to say it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah, September. So okay. not that long ago we read this book. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I really liked it. I think most of Book Club liked it. This is a great one to recommend, Chelsea. What a good pick. Um, if you had to tell me like why you recommend it, what, what would be your answer? Um, I think for me, it came at a very good time because it brought things into perspective. I think everyone at some point, like I said, can relate to this Nora, um, character and her overtaking thoughts with her life and how she feels bored. But, you know, I think the, the, fantasism about it was very intriguing it kept you i mean it had a little bit of everything right it had the science fiction it had the 
fantasy fiction. It had like the deep thinking, like philosophical fiction. Yeah, so it had it all of those things and mm-hmm. it really spoke to a lot of different genres. Yeah. Plus it is so fun. To, well, maybe not everyone thinks this, but like it is fun to imagine all the other lives you could lead. If you've mm-hmm. just done that, like one thing differently, like how different would your life be? Yeah. Uh, it's a fun game to play and it could be explored like endlessly forever. Which Very is much cool. so. Yeah, that book was fantastic. Man, this is like my favorite episode. I love talking to people about their favorite books and like how their reading year went. And like, it's really fun to look back on it all and like synthesize what you learned reading other people's stories. Very much so. I love that. Well, Chelsea, thanks for sharing. You're the best. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm ready for 2022. Oh, me too. And one last reminder that our book for January is called, oh shit, what's it called? (laughs) Something about laziness. Oh no. Wow. I look like a really bad um, leader of book club. It's called Laziness Does Not Exist by Devin Price. Here's why I'm having trouble with that title is because there's another book called The Laziness Myth. And so I keep mixing them up in my mind. Uh, They're different books. One was published in like the 80s. This one is like much more recent. Yes. Anyways, Laziness Does Not Exist by Devin Price. It's our January book. It's nonfiction. Some people are describing it as self-help. I don't know if I'd go that far, but we could all use a little help. (laughs) Right. Totally. In the new year. All right, Chelsea. Well, happy reading and happy 2022. Happy 2022. Thanks for having me. Books with Brooks is produced by Mo Barrow with theme music by Jonathan Allen. Books with Brooks is part of the Press Play Podcast Network, which empowers hosts to create high quality professional shows that inspire and entertain. If you've been dreaming of hosting your own podcast, we can help. Please email content at pressplaypodcast.com to get started today. Please be sure to subscribe to get the latest episodes wherever you listen to podcasts.